Hey, we're back with another one, and this time it's going to be something a little bit different. We have a guest host, and this guest host is going to tear apart a 1986 Montgomery Ward 13-inch color TV for us. Check it out. <laughs> Today we're going to be looking at a 1986 Montgomery Ward 13 inch color TV. Um, the first reference I found of this was in a 1985 holiday gift guide for Montgomery Ward. The original price was $239.99 which is $567 in today's money. Uh, if you're not familiar with Montgomery Ward, they used to be a pretty big retailer uh, and department store. You could see them anchoring um, malls and things like that where you'd normally see a Sears or a JCPenney or or what have you. Um, Montgomery Ward sold everything from uh, clothing, furniture, and toys, and consumer electronics. And uh, we, in my family, we referred to them as Monkey Ward because it's hilarious. So I'm going to use that term probably interchangeably throughout this. Um, and uh, the thing about the Monkey Ward uh, consumer electronics line is it wasn't particularly high end. And in, I think in most, if not all cases, it was all rebranded uh, electronics that were manufactured by other manufacturers and just put the Monkey Ward label on it. Um, as you'll see with this one, this was actually manufactured by a company called Gold Star. And inside, when we open this up, we'll see the inside of the tube actually has a Gold Star label on it. If you're not familiar with Gold Star, they're now known as LG, which I'm sure you've probably heard of them, but they were once known as Gold Star. So without further ado, I am going to get into introducing our guest host. Are you the brains of the outfit, or is he? Tell you the truth, I don't think this is a brains kind of operation. Who is our guest host? Well, he's the mystery man that we all know as Kraz. And he is a good friend of mine that I've known for years and years. And if there are uh, brains to this operation, it's definitely him. He's probably the smartest guy I know. Um, he is from France. I'm French! Why do you think I have this outrageous accent? He's uh, basically a French version of Doc Brown from Back to the Future. He's got the whole mad scientist thing going on, his laboratory or things like that. There's all kinds of cool projects and things torn apart and electronics and oscilloscopes and everything going on in there. So he knows a lot about a lot of things. And one of the things he knows a lot about is CRT TVs. So he was the first person that I talked to when I got this TV and found that it had some problems with the picture. You could see there was some uh, collapse in the screen. So uh, he knew right away what to look at for that. And he did a great job in opening up this uh, TV and going step by step in a very basic way so that people like me who don't know very much about CRT TVs can understand what's going on, what he's looking at, and what he's testing and why he's doing it. So it's a great walkthrough and a great introduction to basics of CRT TV interworking. So hope you enjoy it. Oh, hell, I done introduced him enough. Collar television with the knobs. Yeah, we like those knobs. Okay, first step is we're just gonna plug it in and see what happens. We got, we got a picture. It looks like we have partial vertical collapse. Uh, that's what he said. And then the uh, contrast is all messed up. Interestingly enough, some of the buttons seem to do absolutely nothing. The brightness knob does something. Here we go. So we get this sort of darkness on the one side and then bright on the other side. And the contrast knob also seems to increase the problem. OK, 
Okay. It also stinks of cigarette. So what's interesting about this set, or at least I think it's interesting because I'm a nerd, uh, is that it is a 1986 set, according to the back of the box. It says May 1986. But when you look at the tube, well, at first it's some kind of gold star tube, which, you know, Mon Montgomery, Montgomery Ward or Monkey Ward, like some of us like to call it. Probably didn't build this. This is probably a gold star TV set. And it just slapped the Ward's logo on it. Anyway, the number on the tube is the old standard. Generally, anything made after 1982 would have like a an A, and then the size of the tube, and then the family, the three letters, and then the phosphor type or whatever. So it'll be like, in the case of this 12 inch, it'd be like A, 29 or 34 centimeters, and then FCB, the family, and then the whatever, the phosphor. So, so this does not have that. This is just 370, which 370 millimeters with 37 centimeters is not 12 inch, it's 15 inches approximately. So I don't know what that means. Uh, it doesn't make sense. This is a pre-1982 tube serial number, as far as I can tell. Um, so let's check if uh, this set is even worth restoring by first looking at the tube. The tube does look bright, but we're hoping that other aspects of the tube, like the gun, are balanced and the cutoff is good. So we're going to take a look at that. So first step is... Just charging the tube with one of these little guys. So I see a lot of people using screwdrivers and just hooking up to the ground somewhere on the chassis and just go clack, you know, like it's just, that doesn't seem like a good way to do it. But um, if you have one of these high voltage probe, uh, there's actually a high ohmage resistance in this, like, I don't know, 900 or a thousand ohms or something. And this actually properly will discharge the the electricity, the capacity, the whatever is left over capacitance from this tube to ground instead of just shoving the whole thing down to ground. Um, I mean, you know, whatever. Most service manuals will say that the screwdriver trick is fine, but I like to do it that way. So the way you do it is you um, you take your, your grounding alligator clip here and you, uh, you shove it on the... Um, what's they call the uh, the grounding wire around the dag of the tube here. And you make sure that it's a solid connection. And you go in there with your thing. Probably want to turn off the power also. Good idea. Um, unplug it. And then you look at, there you go. See, you saw that needle? Yeah, anyway. I mean, we could look at it powered on too. I mean, let's see. This in there. Let's see what the voltage we're getting out of the. Uh... Woo! Cracky quacky. That doesn't seem like a lot of voltage, but it is a small tube. Let's see what we got down there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah! Oh baby! All right, we're getting a better reading now. 20,000 volts, 22,000 volts. Yeah, that seems healthy. So good thing is we got a good flyback, or at least it looks like a good flyback. All right, let's turn it off. And then we discharge the two. Pew, zero. So that's that. That's a safely discharged tube. Two rounds. Switch off, unplug it, and now we can safely work on this. Well, actually, we want to get test the tube first, so we'll just. Um, oh yeah, mm, it's 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 dirty. So we'll just didn't seem to have any glue on there, so that's good. And then we're gonna test this tube and see if it's gonna be worth any any of my time to fix it. So we're back, we're gonna use um, this uh, tube tester here. It's, um, it's a thing, 
it makes me look smart when I use it because a bunch of buttons on it. A bunch of dials, some paperwork. It's a Sencor CR70. Uh, I guess you could call this period accurate. This would have been a, the top of the line model for Sencor in, uh, I guess in the 80s. So this does match this pretty well. Uh, now the trick is to find uh, in the setup book, uh, if you buy one of those, you want to make sure of th two things. Um, it needs to come with the setup book, otherwise you I don't know which, you know, it's gonna be harder to, to set it up. And it needs to come with a bunch of these socket adapters. Uh, you must have uh, at least the mo most common one for newer tools would be socket number three, uh, which I guess this is a dual socket. There's three on one side and four on the other side. Uh, and then at the very least, you need something like this universal socket adapter, which is just a bunch of clamps. Uh, and they will let you uh, connect to any tube socket, even if you don't have the specific socket for it. So look for those. I think these are pretty good, the CR70. There's also the CR7000, which is ridiculously expensive, um, but it's also much newer. Uh, also, uh, we'll test all three guns at the same time on a color tube, that is. But this is the CR70. Uh, it's a very good tester. So the first step is to look for the tube reference. So as we can see here, the tube is a uh, serial number, which is a little odd for the year. This is 370 FCB 22. FCB 22, there it is. So this comes with this uh, handy dandy sort of ruler here that lets you uh, highlight what it is that you're working on. So now, now what we're looking at is, does this need the universal socket? And it says socket five or 10. Okay, whatever. Um, so I do have socket five, it's here. So we grab socket five. This is why it's important because um, using the universal socket is not very convenient. When you can just um, plug it in, it's a lot less time. It looks like, yes, it does fit. All right, we got this hooked up. So nice and tight. It does fit socket number five. The next step is to hook up this, it's called a data cable in the manual. It's just a bunch of wires that carry the voltage. I'll turn it on. Let's see, so first thing first is we're gonna set up um, the socket on this. So on the CR70, this was not meant to turn into a tutorial, but the first thing you do is you set all the uh, pin numbers correctly and the filament voltage so you don't burn your tube. So for 370 FCB 22, we need uh, negative biases at 60 volts, 68 volts. That's correct, 68. Uh, next is the filament voltage is 6.3. We'll set that later. But first we need to set up F1, F2, six and seven. Um, F1 is at six, F2 is at seven. And then we have, we're gonna test, we're gonna start with the red gun. So red is eight, nine, 10. That's easy, that's sequential. The red gun is uh, gun. K, which is the cathode, is eight. G1 is nine, G2 is 10. So K is eight, G1 is nine, and G2 is 10. Okay, I like to set the cutoff and the filament voltage to minimum for now, 68. Uh, we want to set the filament range to six volts. And we are in, this is video, the CRT type should be video. Yes, CRT type video, so we're good to go here. Uh, of course we want, this is not really important, it can be on any setup, but uh, this is important to make sure there's a little sort of memory in here that for every time you check a, a, a gun, it remembers all the results, and then uh, if they're too far out of whack, it'll fail one of the tests. So this is important to sort of label what gun you're testing right now. Okie doke, uh, we're ready to go. We're gonna turn it on. Okay, 
So now we need to set the filament voltage. 6.8, 5.0, 4.0, 
blue is number three. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way. So we're gonna do blue. Gonna tighten the screw on this. Anyway, so this is three. Yes, it's blue. Almost up on the cutoff, so a little more cutoff on this, but this is, should be. Yeah, there we go. This is fine. Perfect. Uh, so cutoff is good. All of this is stable. Cutoff is well in the area, and now we're gonna move on to commission. It's just you know flawless. And emission life tests. Wow, this one does not even drop. Oh, it is starting to drop as the temperature. Yeah, but this is, oh, this, there's absolutely no, it's an excellent, excellent tube. Um, let me just double check here that, uh, so then the last test is the collar tracking. So obviously I didn't have to move the cutoff switch too much. Uh, and they're all testing well into this area here. So there's not much difference between the gun essentially as far as, you know, cutoff and, and power and emission strength. Um, yeah, this is warmed up a little bit, so we're gonna just, but I mean, this is, this should be, yeah, color tracking is good. If the guns were too different, uh, if I had to lower the bias voltage here to get to any kind of results, uh, then it would have failed the color tracking and the needle would have been in the vat. So this is what I referred to earlier as the memory inside here. It just keeps track of the results for red, green, and blue. And if they're too far out off of a certain percentage, I believe it's uh, 30 or 40 percent, then this test would fail. Um, but clearly here we have an absolute winner. We're not even going to bother with any of that. Um, this is a good, as is tube. The, te the, the set is probably worth restoring. We're not restoring, but at least getting it to work. But as far as the irreplaceable unobtainium part, which is the tube and the flyback, clearly those two work. So whatever's causing that vertical, partial vertical collapse is probably a, a cap. And as a matter of fact, I was poking at it earlier. <laughs> and this has never happened to me, but um, just by lightly touching one of the cap, it, uh, it came into my hand and it fell off and I Never, this never happened to me before. So clearly this is a bad cap. There's a, it blew up here and leaked. Um, and it was down here, which is right, what looks like the horizontal output trans transistor here. So this area is pretty critical to displaying a picture. Um, and this is a pretty high voltage cap. Um, guessing this is gonna improve the situation noticeably once I change it. Let's just if we can zoom in on this a little bit. Yeah, we can see the, the light is terrible, but uh, yeah, it was down there. And then there's this guy next to it that looks just as baked. Um, it didn't, didn't really touch it, but it seems, it seems loose as well. So that concludes part one of this series on how to repair a CRT TV. Uh, today we went over how to test the guns uh, with the fancy testing equipment and see how much life are left on those, how much life is left in the tube overall and what that looks like and the process involved with that. We made sure the flyback still works, which is another important part. Uh, it's hard to replace. So if either of those things are, are not good, it's not really worth um, going any further in the repair process. But luckily with this case, the tube is in great condition. It's got lots of life left on it, the flyback works. We also discovered that the one of the obvious uh, problems is that blown up capacitor that uh, fell off. So that's clearly an issue that needs to be resolved and maybe there are more that we'll find along the way. But the next video will cover that and uh, taking apart the, the board and taking out all the components that we need to look at and then doing some tests. So stay tuned for that. And uh, as always, retro toilet, you flush it, we fix it. Turn your retro crap into retro gold. See you next time. Uh, you know what, this one's dumb. Dump it, trash it, this one's garbage.